Hey everybody, I'm going to do something a little bit different this morning. Um, I recently here had a request uh, for how the car responds when you do a, when you do a start, a uh, particular warm start. But what I thought I would do, I'm, I'm at the risk of this being kind of boring, is uh, I'm for purposes of documentation uh, and reference for you, I'm going to start the car and I'm going to let it warm up. And right now, the car's been sitting overnight in the garage here at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And outdoors is about 65 degrees Fahrenheit with now that i got the door up. So I'm going to fire it up. I'm not going to speed it up. I'm going to let it idle and let it run for um, till it comes up to operating temperature. And then I'm going to shut it off. Let it sit for... I'll pick a time. I, I think I'll let it sit for 10 minutes. Uh, then I'll come back and do a restart and and watch where, where it goes. Uh, the particular question is, you know, how high when you do a start, how high does it go, uh, RPM, and how fast does it come back down to idle? So let me get this, uh, let me go ahead and light it up here. Turn off the blower. reminder for anybody watching uh, this car is a 1985 it's an IROC Z uh, so the calibration in the com computer is for an IROC it's a 305 or 5 liter tuned port injection fuel injected uh, it's completely stock with the exception of that when I had it rebuilt, it has a Lunati Voodoo cam. Uh, I think it's their, their mildest. So it has a little bit more uh, duration than the factory cam had. Uh, but that really shouldn't affect the, the idle curve very much, uh, if at all. Uh, timing right now is set to spec and um, uh, IAC is set to spec, so everything is pretty much normal. This is how I've been driving the car for about the last 5,000 miles or so. Um, if I uh, remember properly, I will uh, post the specs on the cam just for reference. But. So we got a cold start, and she's sitting here. Now, I will also say is that I don't have an exact calibration on the tack. Um, I, my previous work running it against a scan tool is I would guess that the tack is maybe about, it's a little bit, reads a little bit low, maybe mm, 50 RPM or so. But it's not off a long ways. So let's see, let's see how we do here. kind of like to have my scan tool plugged in so I could watch some of my uh, other parameters but I know that will uh, interfere with the idle so, so so I'm not going to do that this morning just to add to things here I'm going to drop it in gear and just get let's just get a idling drive
back to park. I'm going back to my comments on cam for a moment. The Lunati cam that I chose, well, they, their technical people helped me choose it. It's very mild. Uh, it has a little bit, I want to say it's a, a few more degrees of duration. I want to say five or six off the top of my head. I'll have to get that. Um, and a little bit more lift. Uh, the intent of those designs is to lift the valves a little quicker and set them down a little quicker and get more area under the curve without getting a super long duration. These uh, tuned port engines uh, are sensitive to cams that have too much duration. I mean, you, you'll, you'll upset the tuned port uh, characteristics of the intake manifold. So they, the uh, advice from Lunati was uh, stay to, toward this milder version and it would provide a torque boost throughout the entire range. If I went to something that was a little bit more uh, aggressive, I might get a little bit more horsepower, uh, but not a lot at the very high end, and I would knock off the torque. And I can just say is, um, it's been a very effective cam. This, this engine has a tremendous amount of torque coming off the line. And uh, for this, for its size, it's uh, very satisfying. And I see over there that the temp gauge is starting to move. So we'll let her keep going here. Still sitting at about 750 or 800 in neutral. I'll go back to drive for a minute. I guess we're showing about 600 or so yet. it up here for a minute and let it um, run at a fast idle. Just so that it's not running continuously at idle. She settles right back down there to Seven hundred, I guess. Get 
looks like we're temperature wise we're not quite up to operating but it's getting close we have ten and a half minutes or so in So here I think we're pretty well warmed up. On this car when you get um, I get a better look here. When you get up above that first notch on the temp gauge, that's about where the thermostat opens. And then as you get up approaching the 220 then the fan will kick in but I think right now we're we're at 12 minutes since I cranked it up and it looks like it's pretty warm I'm gonna call out warmed up and again we can see that we're sitting in neutral at um, call out about 700 and um, drop it into gear one more time. So that's warm idle. And on the tack we're showing about 500. And again with you know possibly having a little bit of error it might be actually might be 550-ish. Um, just not knowing the exact calibration of the dash tack but minutes it's warmed up I can see the temp gauge actually backed off a little when the thermostat cracked so I'm gonna shut her down for, for now and much faster it's coming down I mean we're at about 750 again and she's settling back in pretty much to where where it was so although um, you know there are algorithms algorithms in the uh, engine controller that will uh, move the idle speed based on how how the engines running I just noticed you know, here it's gone and decided that it was uh, time to pick up the idle a little bit. I will tell you is that as it was settling to 750, I could feel in the seat that it was idling a little bit rough. So it uh, decided that it needed to pick things up and now it's uh, settling it back out again.
after she settled right back in, I'm gonna put it in gear and we'll put it in drive and see what we get. Pretty much back to normal. We get a little bit of um, a little bit of idle variation, but that's normal for this car. So I hope that's helpful to some of you uh, who are working on these cars. Uh, this is what I, I would consider a normal control system. This is uh, pretty consistent. But remember that uh, ECM control monitors a lot of things on the engine. And they look at speed and the variation of speed and the, you know, the, the, uh, the engineers that designed the software have the ability compared to a carbureted um, pre-computer carbureted engine with these car with these fuel injected engines they have the ability to look at all the engine parameters and say decide that the engine doesn't is running rough it's not even it needs some you know some kind of an intervention and they can you know kick the IAC a little bit and bring the speed up uh, Or, uh, or bring it down or you know move things around to suit what they need to meet emissions and uh, make it pleasant I'll I will say on this car that I have had a few times where the idle was high well one one was with my scan tool plugged in it was definitely high and I ran a separate video on that uh, the other is that um, vacuum leaks will cause it to be high and I've had a number of times where you know, I've had a vacuum hose off, or in particularly on the purge system, on the purge canister. Um, if the purge system isn't working right, you can get, um, it will affect the idle uh, considerably, so. Oh, look at that, I'm almost up to 220 on the, which means the fan will be kicking in shortly here. I think that's uh, all for now, and uh, I'm going to shut her down and call this one a wrap.